Vice President Nixon escorts Soviet Premier Khrushchev on a preview of the United States Fair at Skolniki Park in Moscow. It's the official opening of the American Exposition, counterpart of the Soviet trade show in New York, and dedicated to showcasing the high standard of life in our country. But on this occasion, traditional diplomacy goes by the board, and the story of the fair itself is eclipsed by a crackling exchange between Nixon and Khrushchev, begun off camera and finished off before the American Ampex color videotape recorders. Every aspect of the Cold War and Soviet-American rivalry is argued in blunt and forthright terms. The threat of atomic warfare, diplomacy by ultimatum, economic progress. Huh? Says Mr. Key, the Soviet will overtake America and then wave bye-bye. <laughs> Both Khrushchev and Nixon appear to enjoy themselves. Says Khrushchev, he is a communist spokesman dealing with a capitalist lawyer. All, all that I can say from the way you talk and the way you dominate the conversation, you would have made a good lawyer yourself. <laughs> but the culmination is agreement that both nations should hear the startling debate uncensored. Have all of these uh, reporters here, we have uh, every every word that you have said. Every every word that you have said has been taken down, and I will promise you that every word that you have said here will be reported in the United States, and they will see you say it on television. No, я видел, я сомневаюсь, поэтому я хочу, чтобы вы, вице-президент, что вы даете слово, что моя речь тоже будет записана на английском языке. And telecast over TV. Would it? Yes. In English. In English. Oh, certainly it will. Certainly. Yes. Right, right. Uh -huh. In fact, uh, <laughs> and with the same token, and with the same token, uh, everything that I say uh, will be recorded and translated and will be uh, carried uh, all over the Soviet Union. That's a fair bargain. Oh. <laughs> One million machete-wielding peasants jam the square before Cuba's national capital in response to the call of Fidel Castro for a celebration of the sixth anniversary of his 26th of July revolutionary movement. It is perhaps the greatest mass rally ever staged in the Western Hemisphere, a telling demonstration of Castro's sway over the Cuban masses. Showing another aspect of his character, the unpredictable Castro dons a baseball uniform to pitch a full inning in a benefit game for his agrarian land reform fund. His new president, Dorticos, tosses the first ball and the game is on. Castro pitching is credited with striking out the three batters he faces. Could be. This one game where the ump really has to be careful. Viva Fidel! Contestants for the title of Miss Universe take the stage for the finals at Long Beach and everything is in good shape for this year's edition of the Battle of Beauty with curvaceous contenders from every corner of the globe. Miss Japan, Akiko Kojima, statuesque by Eastern standards with her just over five foot six height, measures up as a finalist. She's 37, 23, 38. Five potential winners, the Misses Norway, USA, Japan, England, and Brazil. Now it's up to the judges, and they tap Miss Japan, the first entry from the Orient ever to win the coveted crown. A rising beauty from the land of the rising sun. A really fanatic ski bird can't be grounded, it seems. What if it is midsummer? Who needs snow? The place, Italy's Ponte di Legno, where history of a sort is made with a new plastic surfacing that's almost as good as the cold, white, old-fashioned stuff. be as cold but it's about as slippery as snow and what ski meet would be complete without a fall or two. 
but mostly they're jumping in fine style. Considering the off-season setting, they're doing incredibly well. And of course, a 150-foot jump isn't bad any time of the year. The winner, Nilo Zanadel, thanks to the magic of plastic. Isn't progress grand? At Germany's seaside resort of Cuxhaven, it's the Mudder's Day Stakes. No Parry Mutuals here, but nobody's out to beat the races. They're out to beat the heat. It was just too hot to get the people to the track, so they brought the track where the people were, cooling off in the briny. And if anyone complains there's something fishy about this, makes sense. After the first few furlongs, or should it be fathoms, horses and drivers are so mud splattered you can't tell who's ahead anyway. One winner who really made quite a splash.